Hello, my name is Michael Idadeji, and today we're going to be starting with um, Galatians. And we're going to read through Galatians, and then we're going to give the spiritual understanding, which, of course, the Bible has so much spiritual understanding, clearly we're not going to be able to get everything. But there's one thing that we can understand about uh, the entire Bible. And uh, we could see that in Luke 8. And in Luke 8, uh, verse 9, the preceding verses are regarding the sower, and the disciples now are about to ask him in verse 9. And his disciples were questioning him, saying, What may this simile be? And in verse 10, Jesus responses, And he said, To you it hath been given to know the secrets of the reign of God, and to the rest in similes, that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. So as we read Galatians, let's just keep that in mind, that the entire Bible is really about the reign of God. God is in control, not the will of man. So whatever we can gain from whatever we read together, um is yours. It's not something that you have learned from me per se, because if God did not already had you to understand it, you would never understand it. So it doesn't matter how smart someone might be or how well choice their words are. The simplicity of God is evident because the Spirit of God is what gives the word life. In the Old Testament, you see the Father. In the New Testament, you see the Son. And the Spirit discerns both the Old and New Testament, the Father and the Son, together. So we'll start with Galatians 1, and we'll see how far we get. Paul, an apostle, not from men, nor through man. Now, it's very important. The first words out of Paul's mouth in Galatians is... Uh, describing his own salvation. Not from men. He was not taught of God through men. Now we know that Paul was um, was very uh, uh, he was he was he was as he would quote it he was like the top of the Jews in understanding Judaism. Uh, however, from that he did not become part of Christ. So not from men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who did raise him out of the dead. Now notice, raise him out of the dead. So Paul did not physically die. Uh, his name was Saul prior to his being saved or, in, or when uh, he met Jesus. He was dead of the spirit. His spirit was dead. So now, Jesus had raised him out of the dead. And this is the same position that everybody is in the world. Everybody is dead. And we can read in Romans 3, No man seeketh after me. So no man is able to make himself alive. And that goes back to no man is able to see the tree of life that is in the Garden of Eden because the sword is in the way, the flaming sword. So it's impossible for man to be able to come into the kingdom of God through their will. Now, Galatians, um, let me backtrack a little bit here. The book of Galatians um, is a book that is is not just talking about people 2,000 years ago. The entire Bible is for today. So the book of Galatians is for those people that think that they can keep the law to get into the kingdom of God. So generally, you know, when, when speaking to somebody, I tell them right away, read, you know, the first four Gospels of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and you get to read about Jesus right away. And then right after that, tell them, go read Galatians. Because after you, after you read about Jesus, then you get to see who actually did the work of salvation. And Galatians is very firm on this. Very firm. It was the work of God and not man. So, let's go back to now verse number 2. And all the brethren with me, 
to the assemblies of Galatia. Okay, all the brethren with Paul. Um, verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now the first thing he's, he's reiterating again, grace. Now Paul got into the kingdom through grace. He did not get in by his will. He had already said that twice, not from man nor through man. And now he's saying it a third time, grace to you for other people. And peace from God the Father. So again, this is a condescending love from God. This is not an ascending love for man and our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. Who did give himself for our sins that he might deliver us out of the present evil age? According to the will of God, even our Father. So now we're up to the fourth verse and already four times we're finding out about the will of God even our Father. It's not talking about man's will. So he's reiterating this in different ways four other times, four times in total, and we're still not even up to the fifth verse. Um, and also it speaks about uh, Jesus being the sacrifice, the sacrifice for our sins, because we could not see without the sacrifice. Verse 5, to whom is the glory to the ages of the ages. Amen. Of course, the glory is God because God did the work. So now you could say this is five times. Who, who's getting the glory of the work? Of course, it's God because God did the work. Now here it comes, six. I wonder that ye are so quickly removed from him who did call you in the grace of Christ to another good news. So up until verse six, Five times we we're able to see who did the work. And now it's talking about uh, how people are removed, for, removed from what they had learned of the grace of Christ to another good news. So this is another gospel here. Verse 7, that is not another except there be certain who are troubling you and wishing to pervert pervert the good news of the Christ. So they're perverting the good news. Well, the good news is, is the Christ. Christ, the word Christ, means anointing. So if you're not anointed, then you're going to try and do it by works. So we can already, from reading the Bible, you'll already, if you know, in the spirit of God, that God's doing the work, the good news is Christ did the work. Christ is the anointing. But even if we, this verse 8, but even if we or, an, or a messenger out of heaven make proclaim good news to you different from what we did proclaim to you, anathema let him be. Now we already know from the first five times that God is doing the work. So if the good news is that you're doing the work or someone's teaching you that you're the one that's able to get into the salvation or the good news is based on your own salvation plan, well, then the anathema would become like a curse to him. Verse 9, As we have said before and say again, if anyone to you make proclaim good news different from what ye did receive, anathema to him, let, let him be. So now, again, in verse 9, he's reiterating um, the curse if someone's giving you a different gospel. Uh, verse 10, For now men do I persuade? Do I persuade or God? Oh, let's read that one again. Verse 10, For now men do I persuade or God? Here's the sixth time we're reading that the will is from God. Paul is saying that he can't persuade anybody. Who's doing the persuading? It's God, as he asked that question. And let me continue the verse, 10. Or do I seek to please men? So Paul's not telling you information to make your ego feel good or let you think that you can have control. Because already we're talking about the reign of God here. So many times that God's reiterating who's doing the power, who's the power. For if yet men... I did please Christ's servant I should not be. If Paul is pleasing men, he can't be the servant of Christ. How could he be the servant of the anointing 
If the anointing is from God, if he's looking to please men, impossible. Verse 11, and I make known to you, brethren, the good news that were proclaimed by me, that it is not according to man. Now, again, yet again, we're hearing that it has nothing to do with man. This is the, this is the major point that is being said over and over again from the beginning of Galatians. We're down to verse 12. And uh, the last part of verse 11, that it is not according to man. Verse 12, for neither did I from man receive it, nor was I taught it, but through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Now, a lot of people think that it's their big duty in the world to go run out in the streets and talk to everybody. Okay. However, we have Paul here who said up and down throughout this first 12 uh, verses of Galatians, that he did not receive it, nor uh, for neither did uh, from man receive it. He did not receive it from man, nor was I taught it, again I'm reading it, but through a revelation of Jesus Christ. So the bottom line is Christ gave him the direct message of the salvation. It was not man. Verse 13, For ye did hear of my behavior once in Judaism. Of course, you know, in the past what Paul used to do, that exceedingly I was persecuting the assembly of God and wasting it. In the old man, Paul is like everybody else on earth. We are not helping anybody to get closer to God. We are actually wasting the church. We are actually spiritually killing people by telling them that you can get into the kingdom by your will. And that's really what the beginning of Galatians up till now is saying, that it's not the will of man. And in in less than 13 verses, it's said it about six, seven times already. Verse 14, and I was advancing in Judaism above many equals in age in mine own race, being more abundantly zealous of my father's deliverances. Of course, Paul was very, very zealous in the Judaism. Verse 15, and when God was well pleased, having separated me from the womb of my mother and having called me through his grace. So again, it had nothing to do with Paul. One more time, he said God had separated him. As far as Paul was concerned when he was Saul, he was very well bent on killing everybody that he could get his hands on. So it wasn't anything that Paul did from his will. Verse 16, To reveal his son in me, that I might proclaim him good news among the nations. Immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Now notice, he said, Reveal his son in me. Christ inside of Paul. That's what Paul is talking about. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not, uh, he's not revealing Christ on the cross. Christ inside of you, inside the person. And Christ on the cross, of course. But in this, it's inside of you. Because that's where God is, inside of the believer. It's inside the body. If God is on the outside of the body, then you are still in the Judaic uh, Old Testament and you will not be able to please God and you're going to be killed in the wilderness. So, uh, and then he conferred not with flesh and blood. So he didn't talk to anybody else. God was teaching him directly. 17, nor did, a guy, did, nor did I go up to Jerusalem unto those who were apostles before me. But I went to Arabia and again returned to Damascus. So again, at this point, it was really Paul from what he learned from God directly. And that again goes to that God is, the, God is a spirit. And God teaches us through our spirit. Verse 18, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to inquire about Peter and remained with him 15 days. Verse 19, and other of the apostles I did not see except James, the brother of the Lord. Verse 20, 
And the things that I write to you, lo, before God, I lie not. Of course, you know, Paul's saying uh, how he did not speak to anybody else, and now he's not telling a lie. Verse 21, Then I came to the regions of Syria and Cilicia. That was verse 21. And verse 22, And was unknown by face to the assemblies of Judea. So, Paul was not known to the assemblies of Judea, okay, that are in Christ. Verse 23, And only they were hearing that he who is persecuting us then doth now proclaim good news, the faith that then he was wasting. So, the faith is the faith of God that now... Paul is converted. So that's all they know about Paul. That's pretty much what he's saying. Verse 24, And they were glorifying God in me. And that's where we will stop for now um, with Galatians. And um, we'll... We'll do other videos that will will go further with with Galatians, but uh, this was Galatians chapter one. And one thing that you can get from Galatians is the bottom line. It starts off with saying that this has nothing to do with the will of man that brought Paul into the kingdom. He said this over seven times, maybe eight times, and how it was the will of God. And, um, and we'll continue in the next video with chapter 2.